Raiding the Tomb of Rachel. Do you remember Rachel in the Bible? She was the favored wife of Jacob and mother of Joseph and Benjamin. But was she a real person or just a made-up character in a storybook? Did she have a tomb? Unlike Leah, who was buried with Jacob in the tomb of the patriarchs, Rachel was buried alone, and the Bible gives us a pretty good idea where. And Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. The tomb is mentioned again in 1 Samuel 10:2 when Samuel tells the future king Saul where to find his lost donkeys. When you leave me today, you will meet two men near Rachel's tomb at Zelza on the border of Benjamin. In the first century, Matthew confirms the location of Rachel's tomb as being connected to Bethlehem as does the Roman and Jewish historian Josephus. By the early 4th century, the location of Rachel's tomb appears to be well known. It was mentioned by Saint Jerome, and in the Onomasticon, Eusebius states, Rachel is buried at the fourth milestone from Jerusalem, in the place called the Hippodrome. The monument is pointed out even now. It is also identified on the Madaba map, dating to 540 AD, and was visited by both the Pilgrim of Bordeaux in 333 AD and Bishop Arculf in 680 AD. It is mentioned in the Talmudic work Midrash Bereshit Rabbah, dating to the 5th century AD. During Ottoman times, the site was visited by Jews, Muslims, and Christians. In the 12th century, al idrisi and Benjamin of Tudela mention a domed structure at Rachel's tomb. A Bedouin cemetery formed around Rachel's tomb in the 18th century, and the tomb itself was renovated in the 19th century by a Jewish philanthropist. Today, Rachel's tomb is considered by UNESCO to be both a mosque and a Jewish religious site. But even more amazing than the historical evidence for Rachel's tomb is its connection to biblical prophecy. In Jeremiah 31, 15, the Lord says, A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Rachel was on the road from Bethel to Bethlehem when she stopped to give birth to Benjamin and died. Ramah is on this road, causing some to believe that Rachel's tomb was actually closer to this city than it was to Bethlehem. But this doesn't explain why Rachel was weeping for her children. Both Benjamin and Joseph outlived Rachel by many years. The best explanation is that the verse is a prophecy about Bethlehem that was fulfilled in Matthew 2, 16-18. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. Herod's slaughter of innocent children in a brutal attempt to kill Jesus, the future king of Israel, certainly would have been mourned in the nearby city of Ramah. Some skeptics have argued that there is no historical evidence to prove that this event ever happened. But there is plenty of evidence that King Herod the Great was a brutal despot and capable of killing children. He murdered his wife, Miramni, her two sons, her brother, her grandfather, and her mother. Jeremiah's prophecy doesn't end with this horrible event. Instead, he makes another prophecy of hope for the future of Rachel's descendants. This is what the Lord says, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy, so there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children 
will return to their own land. This prophecy was partially fulfilled in 538 BC when Israel returned from the Babylonian captivity and then again in 1948 when Israel was re-established as a modern state. But it also speaks to a future fulfillment which is described in Revelation 21, 1-2. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. This new Jerusalem will be ruled by the true King of Israel, Jesus Christ, who like David was born in the little town of Bethlehem. It's comforting to think that what began with Rachel's weeping for her future generations will end with their rejoicing in the salvation of their God. Hi, I'm David, and I really need your help to get the message out. Please subscribe to my channel and watch the next one.